Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how I create this pattern using the variable set to control it. So in here, I can, uh, for example, I can increase the width to 400. You can see they are bigger, but also um, uh, the thickness is uh, smaller at the same time. So I need to increase the height, uh, for example, 55, increase the thickness and also the how sharp the angle over here is 60 the more I increase this the more they are thicker and uh, sharper let's see I want to change it to 10 they are very very small to 20 40 and then I can increase the number of S to 10, the number of Z to 10, and they are parametric. So we hope you enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so I start by create a new sketch on the top view, and we create a center rectangle, start from the center, go out, because I want to use the variable set to control the length of this line and this line. So I need to uh, correct variable set. I go out and I come up here and create a variable set. And because I want to correct two variable set now, so I need to click on add another. Uh, so it allow me to create a multiple va variable set. So the first one will be the width I type in here the name and I click over here and you can see we have the value in here so you can type in here the value in this case I will set it to 100 and the type the type uh, by default is property length is OK and I click OK for that now which is at the first one now we add another one Height, and I click on the base to say the, the value and I type in here 40 and I click OK and then cancel and I click on the var set and you can see down here I have two uh, variable and this is the va value of this now I need to apply the variable set inside the sketch so I go inside the sketch and I click on this line and I hit D and then I click on the expression. Inside the expression, I uh, type in here var for variable set. And width. And OK. You can see the result is now 100. Click OK. Doing the same in here. Go inside the expression. Variable set. And the width. Uh, sorry, the height. Now you can see 40. The next thing I need to do is I need to draw um, the these lines. So make sure you come over here and click on the outer constraints. And I will start from here. You can see if you move uh, your mouse over here, you can see the uh, symmetry constraint up here. Click on it and you come up here uh, and um, add two points and come down here and add two points on this uh, this line and the last point on this line uh, I select uh, this line these four lines and I hit G and N to turn it into construction geometry okay now I create two lines something like this so you can say I create two lines so that this line uh, in between these two points okay I select these two lines and hit G and N to turn that into construction geometry select these two points and the center line hit S for symmetry constraint and set a distance between these two I go inside the expression and I type in here variable set for the width 
And in this case, I want to have the distance is half of the width. So I divide show. So you can see the result is 50. Now I come over here, selecting the two points, and the center line hit S for symmetry constraint. The two points, and the center line hit S. Okay. Now uh, I need to set the di a distance between the two points. So I select the two points, hit D, and we'll set it to the expression. We we'll go inside the expression, and the variable set for the width. And in this case, I want to divide it to 8. You can see the result is now 12.5. And because I will use this one for the upper uh, distance, so I hit Ctrl C to copy. OK, OK. And I go out and select these two points. Hit D, and I will set it. We'll go inside the expression, and I will paste the number. This one, click OK, OK. Right, so now we should have three degrees of freedom. And you go out. Right now, if you click on the variable set, you can change the height to 20. And you can see they are update the corner. And you come inside here and change this one to 50. You can see they are shorter. Right. Now I will call this one the sketch to the up. So I need to create a profile to sweep along this path. I can just select this point and this uh this place and I create a sketch based on the uh, normal to edge and I create a center rectangle. Select these two lines and hit E for eagle. Uh, but I need to uh, link uh, the length of this line to something to make it a uh, parametric. So I go out. And let me call this one profile. So I need to go inside the path. And I need to find the distance from this uh intersection here to the red line so i will create uh, a light vertical like this selecting this point and this this lines hit c this point and this line hit c okay selecting this line and hit g and n to turn it into construction geometry Selecting this point and this line and hit C. Okay, now I select in this point and I hit D and I click on reference and I name it to the thickness. Okay, and I close and I go inside the profile. Click on this line, hit D, and I go to the expression. And I type in here part for the sketch part. And um, will be the constraint. The constraint and the thickness over here. And I need to multiply it to show. Okay. Close. Now I go to the sweep and go to the, uh, I choose the profile. Click on the sweep part and select in this part, hit done and uncheck friend it and check on the create solid. All right, so now we just create the geometry, but we just break the geometry because um, the corner is not too sharp and the width is not enough, so I need to relax the geometry a little bit. I click on the variable set, and let's increase the width to 150. Now we just relax this one a little bit, and 
go to the height and increase this one up to 30. Okay, something like this. And we can hide the issue. And next, I will create in multiple copies of the sweep. I click on the sweep and I go inside the drag workbench. And I create three more copies. I click on the clones. One, two, and then three. Okay. Now I click on the first uh, clone and go to the transform. And I type in here 90 degree for the rotation increment. Go to the front field. And I rotate it 90 degree like this. And I want to move this one up. So, uh, so that this uh, corner right here, uh, matching this corner up here. So I need to move it. Um, you can see the line in here is the width, right? So I need to move it uh, the width, the width, uh, divide 4. So I click on the sweep and then go inside the placement position and the z-axis I go inside the expression and I variable set to the, the width and divide 4. Okay, because I will use in this one multiple times so I need to copy this and just say to copy and I call OK. Now we just move this one up. Now I move, want to move this one to the side in the S axis. So I click on this one, go to the S axis and go inside the expression. And I paste, I can do V to paste it. And I click OK for that. Now we just move this one to the right. But uh, we need to flip it um, in the Y axis. Uh, you can see the YS is the green one. So click on the clone and go inside the scale. And the YS is, I put this to negative one. Okay, now we just fix the problem. But you can see um, right here they are touching. So in order to have a little bit more control of the thickness. You can go back inside the expression, the profile, and you can go inside expression, and you multiply it to zero point eight, for example. Okay, and okay. And I close. You can see they are no longer touching. And then I can do in the same with this one. The sweep zero zero two. Go to the transform, go to the front view, and just rotate this one, and go to the placement position. I want to move this one up also, so I go to the z axis and go inside the expression, and place this one, and click OK. OK. Now I go inside the s expression and I paste this but I need to multiply it to uh, zero po um, negative one okay and I also want to flip it go inside the scale and the y axis flip it to negative one okay doing the same with this one but I need to move this one up to uh, Go to the Z axis expression and the Z axis variable set the width. This time divide two is okay. And click on this one and go inside the scale and flip this flip this one to negative one. Okay, now we can ship select these four, go to the Pratt workbench, and Pratt compile and make compile. The next step is I want to create an array of these. Go inside the shop workbench, click on the compile, go to the modification, array tools, and array. 
and I want to array this in the S. So let's say five. The Y, I don't want to array it in the Y axis. Put one and the Z, let's try five. Good, okay. And this is what we have. So again, we need to link the distance. We go inside the array and go inside the S interval. Right here, we have the S axis. Click on here, go inside the expression and variable set of the width. And okay, and maybe I should copy this one. Okay, and click off. Doing the same for the Z interval. The Z axis expression and replace this one. Okay. All right, pretty good. Now, uh, in order to control the number S and Z, uh, I want to add uh, the number S and Z inside the variable set. So I go double click on the variable set again to add a um, new variable. And I call this one number num s. And in this case, instead of the type, instead of a property length, I go inside here and change this to the property integer. Okay, because this one just a symbol number. And I type in here five. Click on add another. Hit OK. Num z. And let's go to uh, click on the base and change this one to five. Okay, and cancel. Okay, now you can see in the var set down here we have S and Z. Go inside the array. Go down here, the number S. Click on the expression. Go to the variable set and point this one to the num S. Okay. And click on the array, num z, expression, variable set, num z. Okay, now I click on the var set, I can control this. Um, let's see, I want to change the width to 300. Okay, and because they are thinner, so I need to change the height to 40 to make this one thicker. 55. Right, and change this one to 8. You can see, this one to 10. Okay, so that's it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.